nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. On February 6, 2018, tens of thousands of spectators made the pilgrimage from across the United States and 22 million people around the world on YouTube witnessed the thunderous roar of SpaceX's new 23-story tall jumbo rocket as it blasted off on its maiden flight. The Falcon Heavy rose from the same launch pad used by NASA nearly 50 years ago that sent men to the moon. With liftoff, the Heavy became the most powerful rocket in use of the day, doubling the liftoff punch of its closest competitor at the time. Considerably, Falcon Heavy earned the title of most powerful operational rocket in the world by a factor of two. With the ability to lift into orbit nearly 64 metric tons, Falcon Heavy can lift more than twice the payload of the next closest operational vehicle, the Delta IV Heavy. To put it more in perspective, Falcon Heavy can lift the equivalent of a fully loaded 737 jetliner to orbit, complete with passengers, luggage, and fuel. The success of Falcon Heavy staged its mark of opulence, and since then, Falcon Heavy has been certified for the National Security Space Launch Program. Now, let's talk a bit about its stages to further appreciate this marvel of engineering. Falcon Heavy's first stage incorporates 27 Merlin engines, which together generate more than 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, equal to approximately 18 747 aircraft. The 27 Merlin engines are spread across three Falcon 9 engine cores. The second stage tank of Falcon 9 is simply a shorter version of the first stage tank. The tank walls and domes of these stages are made from an aluminum lithium alloy and contain liquid oxygen and rocket gray kerosene propellant. Moreover, both stages use most of the same tooling, material, and all friction stir welding manufacturing techniques. At this point, we're going to shift our focus a bit and dive deeper in our understanding of friction stir welding and its importance in industries such as aerospace and attempt to answer why SpaceX design engineers used it in their space programs. What is friction stir welding? Well, the process was invented and experimentally proven at the Welding Institute in Cambridge, UK in December 1991. And it's best defined as a solid state process that uses a non-consumable tool to bond two facing workpieces without actually melting the work material. The two workpieces can be joined using either a lap or butt weld orientation. The process starts when heat is generated by friction between a rotating tool and the working material, which leads to a softened region near the rotating tool itself. While all this happens, the tool is traversed along a joint line and mechanically intermixes the two pieces of metal and forges the hot and softened metal through a mechanical pressure, which is applied by the rotating tool. Let's talk a little bit about the rotating tool and some of its interesting attributes. In order for the non-consumable rotating tool to produce the high quality butt or lap weld, they are manufactured from a wear resistant material with good static and dynamic properties that can withstand elevated temperatures. Current state of the art tools can produce up to a thousand meters of weld at a rate of five millimeter thick aluminum extrusions without changing the tool's properties. Coupled with these temperature tolerances and its composition, the design of friction stir welding tools themselves is the heart of this remarkable and still relatively new welding process. Generally, the rotating tool has a profiled pin and a shoulder with a larger diameter than that of the pin. For example, with butt joining, the length of the pin approximates to the thickness of the workpiece itself. When in use, the pin would traverse along the joint line while the shoulder is in intimate contact with the top surface of the workpiece. This is to avoid expelling softened material and provide adequate chemical consolidation. One of the most critical settings to achieve successful friction stir wells is the position of the tool shoulder relative to the workpiece surface. To further optimize the role the shoulder plays, some manufacturers incorporate a mechanical position control system. This is accomplished by using single or dual rollers beside or in front of the rotating tool. These rollers guarantee that the tool does not plunge too deep into the workpiece and that the plasticized material is sufficiently forged underneath the tool shoulder. Now, a good quality weld in aluminum alloys usually result in a well-developed nugget that should be visible at the center of a weld. This becomes evident when looking at a macro section of a given weld. 
The outside of the nugget has a thermal mechanically affected zone, which has been plastically deformed and shows some areas of partial grain refinement. The overall shape of the nugget can vary, depending on the alloy used and the actual process conditions. At this point, we've established that friction stir welding is capable of joining aluminum alloy. However, it also has applications in joining copper alloys, titanium alloys, mild steel, stainless steel and magnesium alloys. And even more recently, it was successfully used in welding of polymers and in addition to joining of dissimilar metals such as aluminum to magnesium alloys. Moreover, the load carrying capabilities of joints bonded by friction stir welding are far more superior than other bonding techniques. In some studies, friction stir welding joints exhibited 75% higher load carrying capabilities when compared to riveted joints and TIG welded joints. It's no wonder why the technique was first implemented in the manufacturing process of the external tank of the space shuttle program in 2001 and the tank itself flew in 2009, and since then, NASA has developed multiple tools and advanced processes to advance its welding capabilities on aerospace hardware. Friction stir welding yields higher strength bonds with higher reliability and predictability. It also increases efficiency by reducing the number of weld passes that traditional fusion arc welding requires. In addition to this, it also offers safer, more environmentally friendly operations than traditional welding, by not creating hazards such as welding fumes, radiation, or high voltage. For these reasons, it will continue to be a critical technology as we continue to explore how to build more efficient space vehicles with less expensive materials.